Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. God's mercies endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those whom our God has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to say God bless everybody this morning. And uh, we're just so happy for this is another day that the Lord has made. I'm Reverend Ken Anderson. I'm the senior pastor here at Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Church in Middletown and Towns in Delaware. And we're so glad that you have made a decision to join us on this Sunday, May the 4th, 2022, the third Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, and the first Sunday of the month of May, which means it's Communion Sunday Amen. here at uh, our Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Church worship service. We want to welcome all of those that are watching online on Facebook this morning, all of you who have joined us on the conference call line those that are still on their way, and those who will be watching this worship service later on YouTube. And all of you who have joined us right here in person at Dale United Methodist Church, we thank God for you on this morning. This is another exciting Sunday morning worship service, where in just a little while we'll be sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion and have a special time of officially receiving some new members and a returning member into our fellowship here at Dale and Lee Haven. Amen. I'm excited about all of that. Those of you who are watching this service online or on the conference call line, if you want to participate in communion with us and you don't, want to, don't have one of these pre-packaged communion cups, Please take a moment to grab a piece of bread uh, and as something as close to Welch's grape juice as you can possibly get. And just before we celebrate communion, I will consecrate those elements so you can participate and celebrate in Holy Communion with us. Again, I want to thank all the members of Lee Haven for, for their incredible support for the family at the homegoing and birthday celebration of our dearly, dearly departed sister Judy Ann Greenwich Black on last Sunday. And for the rest of you, I want to thank you for supporting our associate pastor, Reverend Diane Wood, as she oversaw and ministered the word of the Lord right here at our worship service uh, last Sunday as well. I know for a fact that the Lord was well pleased with all that took place among us and that very, very unique Sunday that we had last Sunday. We are continuing to pray for our country and for peace in Ukraine this morning and for all of those who have been impacted by that devastating war that now has continued for close to two months. Amen. Amen. Let us all remember, remember to pray for the peace in Ukraine. Amen. Amen. You might remember a couple of Sundays ago we had a powerful time in the Word and we had prayers for healing. Y'all remember that? Yes. Where we shared God's Word regarding your healing so that we might have what we the Bible refers to as faith to believe. Yes. And then we laid hands on the sick according to Mark the uh, 17th uh, 16th chapter and verses 17 through 18. And the Lord wanted me to remind you this morning that continue to feed your faith on the word of God regarding the thing you're believing God for. Yeah. To continue to put a guard over our mouths. Over those words that may, might be contrary to what you're continuing to believe God for. And allow your promise from the word of God to continue to feed your spirit and your confession of faith until you see the manifestation of that with which you're believing God for. Amen. I don't know who needed to hear that this morning, but somebody did. But at this time, I want to turn the furtherance of this worship service today over to our fine associate pastor, 
Reverend Diane Wood. Let's say amen as she comes. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. You know, we talked last week about giving God all praise because God is so deserving of our praise. So we're going to worship the Lord this morning in beauty and in holiness. And if we just have a little bit of time, I want to start out with a little worship song to just bring us into subjection with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. praise and prayer this morning. Uh -huh. Oh Lord, open our lips and we shall declare. Remember last week I talked about when you declare something, you say it just like it is. We declare your praise this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come before your presence with praise in our heart, dear Lord. We are declaring this morning that you are Lord. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, God, for your compassions that never fail. They are new every morning. We thank you, oh God, for your wisdom and your knowledge, and we thank you for your forgiving love. How merciful art thou this morning. Oh God, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come into Dale Memorial United Methodist Church and sup with you for a little while, oh God, giving you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, dear Lord, because you are the one who laid down your life, oh God, for us, dear Lord. And so, God, we praise you in the spirit and in truth, dear God, and we just love you on this morning, oh God, because you bought us from a mighty long way, oh God. You took us throughout this week, oh God. We faced challenges this week, dear God. But oh God, you bought us through, oh God. It is only because of you, dear Lord, that we are here today. And we recognize that we are nothing without you. And so God, we give you the honor. We give you the glory. And we give you all the praise this morning because you are God all by yourself, dear Lord. And we are thankful and we are grateful to you for who you are. So when we are disobedient children, oh God, I ask, Lord, that you forgive us for our many sins by thought, by our words, and by our deeds, dear Lord. But, oh God, in the name of Jesus, help us to keep moving forward. Help us to keep traveling on that road and looking towards the light that will free us from darkness, oh God. You are a gracious God, and oh God, we are grateful for you. So bless this worship service, this is dear Lord, as only you can. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, who is author and finisher of our faith, amen. 
I came into church this morning and I heard some different type of music. And I said to Jean, I said, this is a different type of music in here. Somebody playing that piano? She said, yes, Miss Peggy. I said, well, look at God. Welcome back, Miss Peggy. Glad to see you. Amen. Amen. Yes. At this time, we will have our greeting by Dr. Savannah Williams Anderson. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. It's just so good to be in the house of the Lord. And we missed you last Sunday. We, um, and we've gotten so used to worshiping together as one, and it was just very odd being in one place and not the other. So we missed you. Good to be back. Good to see all of us together. Um, just one thought. It's so good to see Sister Peggy. Amen. Let's give another round of applause. You know? So the things that we have missed, little by little, they are coming back to us. And we are truly blessed. We are truly blessed. And I love starting out with the worship song because thank you, thank you for blessing me, for blessing you. And let's give the Lord a hand clap one more time. Blessings to all. Enjoy our worship service today. It's good again to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Devana, for that beautiful greeting this morning. By way of announcements, if there's anyone who is in need of food, please contact Sister Marguerite Donas at 302-508-9207. And I just want to back up because I want to acknowledge our visitor this morning. I believe this is Sister Donna Hitchner, Brother Alan Hitchner's wife, who is with him this morning. We thank you for coming into our worship service to worship with us this morning in spirit and in truth. Dr. Flo, Dr. Flo, God bless you on this morning, Dr. Flo. Welcome back. Yeah. So many of us travel uh, for different reasons, um, and, and God is still seeing us through our travels, whether it's by car, by plane, you know, and, and it's an amazing because, Dr. Flo, I know you travel back and forth a lot from where your home is, and God is continually seeing you through it, and our sister, um, oh, in Liberia, Sister Bailey, yes, yes, she left to go back to Liberia not so long ago, so we keep them in prayer. Um, Brother Hitchener, yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Um, so if anyone is in need of food, please contact Sister Marguerite at 302-508-9207. If anyone is interested in donating to the Live for J. Lynn Project for our book bag drive, Please contact Sister Darlene Williams via text at 302-893-8609. Adult Sunday School will begin a new study on May the 14th at 8 o'clock a.m. We will be studying Sermon on the Mount by Professor Amy Jill Levine. Youth Sunday School will meet today at 1230. The topic of discussion will be doing the right thing. If anyone is interested in joining the youth study or adult Sunday School we, and will be committed to attendance, please contact myself, Associate Pastor Diane Wood, at 215-313-8087. The Monday noonday hour of prayer meets every Monday at 12 noon, and this ministry is led by Minister David Kane. If you have any prayer requests that you would like presented during tomorrow's hour of prayer, please send those requests to Minister Kane by email at Jesus 
my hero three nine two seven at gmail dot com. If you desire to listen in on a prayer call, you may do so by dialing four two five four three six six three nine one access code six seven nine three five nine. To attend Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Church combined worship services in person, please register at any time up to and including Saturday by 5 p.m. Registration will close at 5 on Saturdays or when we have reached capacity, whichever comes first. For security and safety reasons, the doors of the sanctuary will be secured by 1020 a.m. Mask wearing is now optional, but we are encouraging those with underlying conditions to continue wearing your mask. We will continue with our three feet social distance practice. Please keep our bereaving families in your thoughts and in your prayers. At this time, we will have our prayer for our congregants in sick and shut in by Minister Kane, followed by our scripture reading by Minister Sherry Morrow. Amen. Praise God, church. Let's give God another hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, we can't give him enough praise because he deserves all of it. Because like the sister said, he is God and he is God all by himself. We praise and thank God once again for even us to be together here in the house of the Lord. Uh, this morning, I know for a fact there are some hearts that are heavy, but God reminds us in John 14. The gospel according to John, yes, Reverend Henry, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Ye believe in God, believe also in him. He said he goes to prepare a place for us. And if he going to prepare a place for us, he's going to come back to receive us. That where he's at, we will be also. So let us continue to pray for one another. Church is praying time. I said it's praying time. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Let us bow here, please. Our Father and our God, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, once again, oh God, we come back at your throne of grace this morning, dear God. Through our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we re-enter your courts and gates this morning, oh God, uh, with thanksgiving and praise. Oh God, you sit in the kingdom of heaven and look down upon your creation, oh God. Oh, God, you created us. Oh, God, in fact, you created all 12 planets, oh, God. But you chose earth, oh, God, to have your people dwelling, oh, God. We thank you, oh, God, as we slept in slumber last night. Oh, God, you watched over us. Fire didn't consume our dwelling, oh, God. A strong man didn't enter our home, oh, God, with a home evasion. And, oh, God, you woke us up. It wasn't the, the smell of coffee, oh, God. But, oh, God, it was you, oh, God, that woke us up this morning. You woke us up, oh, God, and you allowed our feet, oh, God, to be placed back on solid ground. A day which we never seen before, oh, God, on this side of the Jordan River, oh, God. Some take it for granted, oh, God. But, oh, God, we say thank you this morning, oh, God. Because you didn't have to do it because you did it anyway, oh God. It's only because of your grace and your mercy, oh God, that we continue to strive, oh God. But, oh God, in the meanwhile, oh God, oh God, we have some folks, oh God, some parishioners, some loved ones, oh God, that are sick and shut in, that are not with us this morning, oh God, because they very well may be in the hospital, oh God. They were very well, oh God, may be in a rehabilitation center, oh God. Some may be at home, oh God. Oh God, we look to the hills from which comes our help. In this past week, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for what you have done for Brother Pete, oh God, and Sister Marva Congo, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for Mother Evans, oh God, what you've done for her this past week. We thank you, oh God, what you've done for Reverend Diane Wood this week, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, it's only because of you, oh God. I said it's only because of you, oh God. We stand in the gap, oh God. Just as we gave you the praise, oh God, for, oh God, for Brother Joseph Archie, oh God. 
Just as we gave you the praise, oh God, for Mother Betty Todd, oh God. Just as we continue to give you praise, oh God, in that praise report, oh God, for Sister Renee Reed, oh God. Yes, to those names that has been recorded in the little red book, oh God, on the fourth watch of the night, oh God, 3 a.m., oh God. Oh God, they ain't no stranger unto you, oh God. But oh God, this morning, oh God, we continue to yield to your sovereignty, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you already know the hearts, oh God. Oh God, as we stand in the gap this morning, and as we touch and agree, oh God, oh God, for our very own, the under shepherd that you sent this way to lead your people, oh God, in the name of Jesus, the under shepherd, oh God, Reverend, oh God, Aronson, oh God, Dr. Devana, they're going to need you this week, oh God. Oh God, they're going to need you this week, oh God. And their hearts, oh God, may be heavy, oh God, but let them know, oh God, that vengeance is yours, says the Lord. Oh God, help them. Be with them, oh God. Here I cry for them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And oh God, we continue to stand in the gap, oh God, for the Needle family, oh God. The anniversary, oh God, of Brother Keith. Oh, God, stretch out your hand to thee, oh, God. Oh, God, you brought them a mighty long way, oh, God. But, oh, God, as they come together today, oh, God, as they stand, oh, God, and, 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 oh, God, and look over Keith, oh, God, remains, oh, God, at the cemetery. Let them know, oh, God, that you are with them. And, oh, God, you promised them you will never leave them nor forsake them, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you right now, oh, God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, oh, God. So, oh, God, so this worship would not be done in vain. Oh, God, please forgive us. Oh, God, of every sin that which we have sinned against you, cast them in a sea of forgiveness, oh, God. Purge us, wash us as white as snow, creating us, oh, God, a clean heart. Oh, God, and we promise you, oh, God, in our private closet, We'll be so careful once again to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise. Almighty powers of Calvary, victory in Jesus' name. And let God's children say amen. 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 That's right. Lift him up. Lift him up. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And, oh, God, as it just, oh, God, the, oh, God, the name just continue to reign, oh, God. The name just continue to reign, oh, God. Oh, God, the one that's sitting in the midst of us this morning, oh, God. Sister Judy Mann, oh, God. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, God, you already know what's going to take place this week. Oh, God, she's having surgery. But, oh, God, you be, oh, God, the physician. You be the anesthesiologist, oh God. Oh God, you be the nurse, oh God, in the operating room, oh God. Oh God, yes, oh God. Your word reminds us, oh God, uh, for us to stand in the gap. Oh God, and touch and agree, oh God. It's already done as the sister said, oh God. Oh God, as we stretch out our hand to thee, let Sister Judy know, oh God, that somebody prayed for her. Because they took the time, because they had her on their mind. And they prayed for her, oh God. Oh God, your word says we have not because we ask not. Your word reminds us that by your stripes, oh God, that we are healed. So let Sister Judy know at the midnight hour, don't be restless. Just continue to let your will be done. You are the heel of thee. And oh God, we promise you that she would be the one like the ten lepers to come back in the household of faith to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise. Have your way, Master. Have your way. King of kings, lords of lords, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, I am that I am. The bright and morning star, the great lily of the valley, Yes, all by yourself.
Have your way, Master. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And once again, parishioners, give God a hand clap. Give him the glory and give him the honor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. I know about you, but my spirit's on overflow this morning. I feel the presence of the Lord in the house. Amen? If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Hallelujah. Woo. It's on overflow. Hallelujah. Let us please stand for the truth, the reading of God's word. Amen? Yes, I will be reading uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27, and also Psalm 92, 12 through 14. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, were, were the hearing. If the, whole, if the whole were hearing, where is the smelling? If the, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, into the body as it has pleased him. If they were all one member, where were the body? But now are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think are less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, that the members should have the same care for one another. And whether one member suffer, yes. all members oh, suffer yes, yes. with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Psalm 92, 12 through 14. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, uh, Minister Kane, for that powerful yeah, prayer. Right. The prayers of the righteous avail yeah. much. And I know that we are a praying church. Yes, Somebody is always praying for always us praying. as a church family. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Minister Morrow, for yeah. reading those powerful scriptures to us this morning. At this time, we will have our tithe and offering by our senior pastor, Reverend Ken Anderson, followed by our solo for today by Sister Lavanya Johnson. And then we will have our word, faithful membership. Don't leave church without it. Amen. 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 Glory. Well, say amen, everybody. 
Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this worship service. Amen. Amen. I'm here to receive our tithes and offering as, as we prepare to receive that. If you've been a member of Dale and Lee Haven for any length of time, you know on first Sunday, we always share from the book of Malachi. Amen. Yes. Amen. Malachi, the third chapter, and usually verses 8 through 12. Yes. Now, we're going to share those scriptures this morning, but what I want to do, what I feel led to do, is to read two different translations of Malachi 3, verses 8 through 12, and just allow the Spirit of the Lord to speak to your heart. And I ask that you would be willing to hear and receive what the Spirit of the Lord would say to you as you hear those two translations of that passage of Scripture. I believe the Lord will speak to you, and you'll know exactly what to do when you hear God's voice uh, from this word. First reading from Malachi 3, verses 8 through 12, comes from my favorite version of the word of God, the King James Version, and it reads as follows. Will a man rob God? Now, y'all know that means women too, right? Y'all know that. I don't have to say that. Yet ye have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. And I will rebuke the devour for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And now these same scriptures from the message translation. This is interesting. I'm a King James preacher, but I love, I love this translation. It reads as follows. Begin by being honest. Do honest people rob God? But you rob me day after day. Lord, have mercy. You ask, how have we robbed you? The tithe and the offering, that's how. And now you're under a curse. The whole lot of you. That's a little rough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're robbing me. Bring your full tithe to the treasury, to the temple treasury. That, that's here, y'all. That's the, we're, we're the temple treasury, just in case somebody wanted to know. So there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself. Ha! to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. For my part, I will defend you against marauders, protect your wheat fields and vegetable gardens against plunderers. The message of God of the angel armies, verse 12, you'll be voted happiest nation. You'll experience what it's like to be a country of grace. God of the angel armies says so. Amen. 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 A word from the Lord for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are in person this morning, we will not be passing an offering plate today, but our usher will place a plate near the exit for those who want to sow their seed as they exit the church. The rest of us, we will continue to sow our seed through cash, app, or via the mail. If this is your first time with us this morning, or if you're not a member of Dale or Lee Haven, and the Lord has placed it on your heart to bless this ministry, you can share your gift electronically through Cash App by contacting Sister Jean Archie at 
5516 for contributions to Dale. And for Lee Haven, you can reach out to Sister Cindy, you can, uh, and she can, you can contact her at 302-653-7619. You can also mail your gifts, tithes, and offerings to the following addresses. For Dale, you can mail them to Dale UMC, P.O. Box 190, Middletown, Delaware, 19709. And for Lee Haven, you can mail them to Lee Haven UMC, 413 Blackbird Landing Road, P.O. Box 279, Townsend, Delaware, 19734. Let us pray over our tithes and our offerings that shall be received among us this coming week. God, we're so grateful that you have put us in a position where we can so see back into your kingdom. Lord, we're grateful because we know you didn't have to do it, but you did. We're grateful, Lord, that you are a God of abundance. We're thankful that you have allowed us just to share a portion of what comes into our hands back into your kingdom and as a result, be a participant in kingdom blessings in your financial system. The system that can keep us under an open heaven. A system that allows us to have deposits in a heavenly account. A system that allows that deposit to come to us through many different ways in our time of need. Lord, we're grateful for the privilege of being able to sow into that system, to your kingdom, out of a glad heart, out of a thankful heart. That's why we give. We thank you for the faithful membership that we have at Dale and Lee Haven, that even through the lockdown, even through the pandemic, they allowed us to be in the, the black financially. We thank you for the miracles that have taken place in our midst financially. We thank you for the, the five-figure offerings we receive from people who don't even go to this church. What it says to us, Lord, that we're on the right track. And if we continue to be faithful, you'll continue to bless us in many, many different ways, spiritually, socially, mentally, physically, and financially. Yes, Lord. And for that privilege, we just say thank you. Thank you so bless those that have today. Bless those that have not. Lord, bless them just for the desire that they do have to give. Bless them as if they gave it anyway. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask all these blessings in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Let everybody say Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here. I've been toiling with two different directions and because it's now. right, right. <laughs> Well, I think because of communion today, I think we'd just do a, a, a medley. A, so join in with me, please. Oh, the blood of Jesus, I'm singing oh, the blood of Jesus, singing oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white.
Stand up for a minute yeah. and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you believe in the blood, yeah. the power yeah. of the blood, yeah. amen, the power yeah. of the blood, yeah. my Lord, my Lord, Hallelujah. Glory. you may be seated yes, in the Lord. house yes. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Have you ever had what yes. some people call night night dreams? My, my, my. I usually believe they're attacks of the enemy yes. that can come on you, try to, you know, just usually after something significant spiritually has occurred in your life or yes. something you're doing that the devil just hates, my the my fact my. that you're doing it. And all in the middle of nowhere, in the it's middle of the nowhere. night, you know something is bothering you that shouldn't be there, amen. Yeah, amen. And you know, yeah. I've been in, and I've shared this before, I've been in those situations where that has happened, uh -huh. and I'm kind of in a, like a sub-sleep. I'm not all the way asleep. I'm halfway asleep, but I can't say anything. And each time that happens, uh -huh. without me initiating it, yeah. you know what comes out of me? Way down out of here, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And whatever's going on in that moment, it stops. It flees. So I know that's right, Sister Lavania. That's there's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that. Medley. I love that medley amen amen and for all that has tri transpired in our worship service today i just love so much all all that the lord has done thus far the prayer the the worship leader uh the tech team doing their thing over there the uh, sister peggy tinkling the ivories amen my own, my own better half. I'm not gonna say she's the better half. The other half, the other half. Y'all, y'all should see what she just did up here. Just the other half, and 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 what, what she say. You know, ha ha happy wife, happy life, right? Is that right? I do. Thank you for your prayers, as Doctor. Devana and I have to get on a plane on Tuesday and go back to California. Y'all might remember a year ago, at almost exactly a year ago, we were in California yeah. dealing with what we had to deal with after uh, the tragic death of my daughter, and we're going back. They're having the pre-hearing after a whole year, a whole year, they're having the first pre-hearing on Wednesday. And they told me, and none of my, the, the, the girls aren't going, 
because there are probably going to have to be another hearing after this one, but they told me there's going to be some video that they have to show and some witnesses that they have to call that were on the scene. And they even suggested to me I might want to leave the courtroom at that moment. So over the last week and a half, I've been, I've had to face this again. And because I had to make, make, had to make travel arrangements, so I got, I got to face it. And so um, I don't know if many of you knew that when Minister Cain was praying, but that, that's what's going on. So we solicit your prayers. I know the power of prayer. The power of prayer has to be standing upright right now. It's the power of prayer that has brought me thus far. And so I thank you for your prayers. I know I'll have them. I thank God for Dr. Flo who had to go back Africa to UK for the transition of her brother. Every time I look 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 up, Dr. Flo is in Africa. She she'll get up and go to Africa in a minute. But we thank God for her. She's a blessing to this church in so many ways behind the scenes. And of, of course, Bert, we thank God for Sister Peggy and all of you that are starting to come back. I, I, I'm just waiting for, for Bert, Brother Barry Boyd to roll in here with that bass guitar. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I know. I don't know where he's going to put it. But I'm just waiting on that bass guitar. Do y'all know Brother Barry is a serious well-known bass guitar player <laughs> so we thank God for his gift and all the gifts that are reflected in this room and you may not even know about them yeah. gifted gifted talented uh, folks among us again we honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he is the author and the yeah. finisher yeah. of our faith yes, he is. Yeah. our God this our morning God. who continues to sit high and look low yeah. Our God who told Job that he sits on the circle of the earth. Y'all think about that. He sits on the equator. And he's the one that stretched out the north over the empty space and hung the earth out on nothing. And that's where it's hanging today, out on nothing. It's a is a physics phenomenon. But that's, that's how it's happening. God is holding it out there. We honor this morning the God who inscribed a circle on the face of the waters and told the waters, go this far, but no further. He put a boundary between light and darkness. I'm talking about the God we serve. We are here to worship our God who spoke through the prophet Isaiah in the 45th chapter and the 5th verse and said, I am the Lord. There is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. We serve a God that will strengthen you even though you won't give him the time of day. And then God in the flesh, Jesus would say in Luke chapter 18, verse 27, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Can you say amen? Song says, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels for him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. One more time, one more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen, amen. As P. 
people, as people would say about Muhammad Ali, he's a bad man. He's a bad man. Would you join me and lift your hands to the Lord after hearing all that? And let's just worship the Lord for a few seconds. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him that you just want to praise him and lift him up. Lord, we thank you this morning. We worship you. We lift you up. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. You've been so very good to us. And I'm taking a few seconds to lift holy hands unto a holy God, to recognize who you are, to acknowledge your presence, to acknowledge your sovereignty, and give you the praise, and give you the glory in your house. Now just give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. You know, we, we, we preach we preached a little bit on Resurrection Sunday about what Christ went through physically on the cross. Y'all remember that? And y'all remember what happened to those hands? Y'all remember what we talked about? That means when you come through those doors, you should just lift your hands up. Just lift them, just lift them up. Because of what he went through for us. Again, honor to all of you who have joined us on this Communion Sunday. There is a special word from the Lord as we formally receive into Dale and Lee Haven congregation several individuals who have been worshiping among us and who have expressed a desire to travel this Christian journey along with you and I. I don't know about you, but next stop, heaven. Think about that. Next stop, when you come out of this body, next stop is not Alaska. It ain't Dallas. Next stop is heaven. For the word says to be absent from this body is to be in the immediate presence of God. Woo! Sometimes you just want to go, don't you? I don't want to go before I'm supposed to. Let's, let's get it straight. But sometimes you want to. They want to travel with us. Two of these precious saints of God started worshiping with us during that 18 to 20 month lockdown. I'll never forget that. And as we began to open back up, Sister Jamel Johnson, lift up your hand, Sister Johnson. Amen. And, amen. And, and Sister Letty Mitchell Anderson, who moved away and came back to Delaware, they found themselves joining us in person when we opened back up. Now, y'all know how I do. I told Sister Johnson that after she came three times, then it's probably time to do something. And then after her fifth visit, I counted. One, two, three, I counted. After her fifth visit, she gave me, just as she did, I said, I looked, you know, I didn't, I just looked at her and she said, <laughs> she gave me the thumbs up sign. And so she will be officially joining Dale United Methodist Church this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, Sister Letty sounds like Betty. Mitchell Anderson has been serving among us faithfully for a few months. Uh, since arriving, she has attended both the Lay Academy, and I believe the Advanced Lay Academy. Amen. Amen. She has been our worship leader a number of times, and just she just hit the deck plate running. Just, just, just you know, what can I do? Like my, like my golden retriever. I don't, what can I do? Um, but I wanted. Joined the prayer team. That's one of the first things she did. 
but I wanted her to have the same opportunity to participate in this reception this morning as a new, relatively new member of Lee Haven Amen. United Methodist Amen. Church. Amen. And Brother Alan Hitchner. Right, yeah. I hope y'all get a chance to interact with this brother. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He is a unique believer. He started watching our services online after a suggestion by one of the leaders in our conference whose home church just happens to be Dale United Methodist Church. That is, of course, our district superintendent, Reverend Joseph Archie III. So Brother Hitchner just started worshiping with us on Facebook participating actively in those services by posting very theologically based edifying exhortation. Prolifically. He would put them in the comments section of Facebook during the worship service, showing a deep love for the word of God and the scriptures. And so he and I finally connected where he expressed his desire to join us and then he started the process to make that happen and the rest is history. Amen. So Brother Allen will stand before you as a new member of Dell in just a few minutes. Amen. 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 And I don't, I, Sister Wanda, chair of our reopening committee, is not here today so I may go a little over. Don't y'all tell her. I know she. I know she might be watching. She might be pointing, going like that, right? Now. And of course, our own Reverend Gwen Henry. Let him see you, Gwen. Where are you? Now, I don't. I don't feel like I need to say this, but people may not know. Reverend Henry is the daughter, the eldest daughter, as I understand it, of our own brother Joe and Jane Archie. Now, who, who didn't know that before I said it? Anybody? Okay. I, amen. Okay. Very good. Interesting. That's why the Lord had me say that. So. She's been a pastor in this conference for a number of years, many of you know, and of, of course, Dale is, Dale is the church in which she grew up. This is her home church. And she has decided to go back to school. She's pursuing a different status within the ministry, continuing to discern God's next assignment for her. And she got hold of me and others expressing her desire to return to her home church. And y'all know there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Now, I said this before, I'm going to say it again, just so we're clear. She said to me, Pastor, I just want to come and sit. I said, uh-uh, no. Uh -uh. You, mean, you mean come and serve? She said, yes, a pastor, of course. Of course, that is this pastor's heart. And so we're blessed to officially welcome Reverend Henry back home this morning. Amen. So just before communion, we will bring them before you and the Lord here in this sanctuary. And I pray that you got a handout because you too will have the opportunity uh, to reaffirm your commitment. If you don't have a handout, just raise your hand. And our wonderful usher, Sister Saunders, will get you a copy of that document. Amen. And because of this special time we're going to have in just a few minutes, I felt led today to share a different kind of word about the importance of what I call covenant membership. Covenant membership. What it really means if that kind of membership is necessary to be a Christian, how it differs from other kinds of memberships you might have with other kinds of organizations, what the Word of God and or our United Methodist Church Book of Discipline says about what faithful membership is. 
How does God feel about it? And its importance to our individual and cor corporate spiritual growth. And is it possible to operate under the blessing without first being in covenant with God and in covenant as a faithful member in God's local church? Is it possible? Now, we may not get absolute clarity about all these questions this morning, but I believe the Spirit of the Lord will begin to rebuild our understanding of this topic for some of us and bring insight about the true meaning of church membership to the rest of us this morning. I thank God for the earlier reading of our scriptures, uh, but I do want to read again our scripture from Psalms, the 92nd chapter, verses 12 through 14. And this reading comes from the Amplified Translation of God's Word. It reads as follows. The righteous will flourish. So who's he talking to? He's talking to righteous, those who are in right standing with God, true believers, true disciples, right? The righteous will flourish like the date palm. In other words, the righteous will live long, upright, and be useful just like a date palm tree. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic and stable. Those cedars grow and are known for being majestic. Verse 13, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will grow in grace. They will still thrive and bear fruit and prosper in old age. That's good news for most of y'all in here. They will flourish and be vital and fresh, rich in trust and love and contentment. In other words, church, those who are in right standing with God, true believers, true disciples of Christ, who are planted. Somebody say planted. Everybody knows what it means to be planted, right? Who are planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish like a date palm tree. They will grow spiritually like a cedar in Lebanon. Majestic and stable. They will grow in grace. They will still thrive and bear fruit and prosper in old age. And they will flourish. Somebody say flourish. They will flourish. They will be rich in trust love and contentment if that's conditional that's a conditional uh, statement what I'm about to say if they are found planted in the house of the Lord can you say amen, amen. so my text this morning faithful membership don't leave church without it don't leave church without it they used to say don't leave home without American Express. That's one of the reasons I got somebody. They say, don't leave home without it. All right, go get one. But the Spirit of the Lord wants to remind us in this season that we are in, which is a season unlike we have seen in our lifetime. It's saying, it's time, if you're not, to be planted in the house of the Lord in order to flourish and grow in the things of God in this season. Can you say amen? amen? We had an incredible Sunday of worship celebration both at Dale and Lee Haven last Sunday. Neither one of those services could have been done with excellence without the support and the commitment of you, our faithful membership. We had a unique situation at Lee Haven after a longtime member of Lee Haven, Sister Judy Black, most of y'all know her, went home to be with the Lord. And as the family worked with the funeral home, there are, developed the opportunity to possibly conduct Sister Black's homegoing service on the same day as her 86th earthly birthday. but it would have to be done on the upcoming Sunday in a situation where we would be challenged with limited capacity for someone who had a huge circle of friends and family. 
Now, neither had I and most of the longtime Christians that I know had ever, never, ever been to a homegoing celebration on a Sunday, first of all, and never been to one where the person whose homegoing we were celebrating, it was her birthday. I, I don't, I've never, I've never done that before. That's a, that's a first for most of us. Anybody ever did that before? Nobody, no, you did not. There's, there's always one in the room. Wow. Well, Sister Renee, she's been under a little medication, so we didn't get it. Oh, so there's one. There's one. The fir first one I've run into. Praise the Lord. So in this case with Sister Judy, we would have to do this on that upcoming Sunday. And it was like five days away in a situation where we would be challenged with limited capacity. So we came together, made some tough decisions, got the reopening committees together to figure out how you pack the church and the dining hall and stay safe. Had to go out and buy a new TV that where we could show Facebook in the dining hall. It was just a phenomenal effort that was before us to make something extremely unique happen. But because of Sister Black's longtime faithful membership and in an attempt to support one of her final written request. Once we made the decision to do it, the Lee Haven family came together in what I can only describe as an extraordinary effort with not a lot of time. And they prepared Lee Haven so that we were able to have a safe, organized, dignified, celebratory, homegoing, and birthday celebration. Amen in a packed sanctuary and dining hall, fully masked, of course, followed by an internment on what turned out to be a beautiful service on an equally beautiful Sunday morning and afternoon. Amen. Faithful membership has benefits. It has benefits. Not just when you transition, but right here in the sometimes yes. nasty here and now yes, has benefits. Yes, so how important is faithful membership in the local church? And what is the difference between being a member and being a faithful member? There is a difference. You can be a member of the Boys and Girls Club. You can be a member of the Elk Club. You can be a member of Jack and Jill. You can be a member of a sorority, a fraternity. You can be a member of a different, various different kinds of clubs and organizations, but God has a different expectation. Yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. Regarding our level of commitment and service when it comes to being a member of the body of Christ and his local church. And when compared to all other membership organizations, church membership is different. It's just different. Being a faithful member is about being in covenant. It's about being in covenant. It's about more than just having your name on the church rolls. What Lee Haven did to come together to support an extremely unique request from Sister Black and her family was the result of Sister Black being found to have been faithful over a long number of years. 
and faithful membership has its benefits. As I said, unlike membership in most other clubs and organizations, with very few exceptions, faithful membership is about being in covenant with other members. It is an agreement to establish and uphold one another in our journey as Christians. That's why you can go or where you go to church is so, so important. Are y'all listening to me? Because everybody that says they're a church today is not the church you would expect to find. Everybody that has Bibles in their church doesn't believe what's in them. Some say that the gospel has evolved. And my Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today. So who changed? Who changed? You shouldn't go to a church just because your cousin goes there. Oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. You shouldn't go to a church just because your brother-in-law is the pastor. You shouldn't. You might, but you shouldn't. That shouldn't be your reason. You shouldn't go and join a church just because they have a good choir. A whole bunch of people do that. They shouldn't. They do. Or just because they have fried chicken and collard greens after service. Now, I got I to gotta think about that. Hey, yeah, collard greens. We, uh... I'll pray about it. You shouldn't join a church just because they have donuts and coffee before church starts. All those might be nice reasons to visit. Shouldn't be your reasons to be in covenant relationship. When we rightly understand what church membership is truly for real on the real real all about. Now, that was for somebody listening that is looking for a church home this morning, online or maybe on the conference call line, because they've come to realize by looking at the things that are going on in our world today that you need to be in covenant in a church. You need. You need to be under a prayer mantle. Now, Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong. I do know most of the churches. You're not going to find too many churches that pray like we do. You know, you never miss your water in what? Until the well runs dry. You need to be under a prayer mantle in this hour. You need a church that preaches and teaches the truth of the word of God. Not some evolved understanding about what he means and about what she means. Oh. You need a pastor who will watch for his soul and yours. You need a pastor that doesn't need the money. Oh, I. And this season, that we are in right now, if you do not have a pastoral or prayer covering in this moment, you are exposed and you are in danger. You need to be connected to a church that believes in the unadulterated word of God that believes that the God of the Bible is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That believes that God doesn't change. You need to be connected to a church that understands this incredible concept of the grace of God, unmerited favor. He loves you just because he does. That's why he said, come as you are. Come unto me, all ye that labor 
and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. And you, you need rest? I'll give you rest for your weary soul. You need to hook up with the church that understand that God loves us beyond our ability to fully comprehend it. We don't get it. And that the Lord God Jehovah, yes. Elohim, yes. Jehovah Jireh, yes. Jehovah Tiskanu, yes. Jehovah Shema, yes. El Shaddai, El Shaddai. Oh. loves you. Loves you. He's got the time to hang the earth out on nothing but loves you. Yes, you. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for messed up me, my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Can you say amen? I thank God because I was jacked up, toe up from the floor. If I was God, I wouldn't save myself. I deserved everything that was coming to me. I don't know about you. I, I can hear somebody, oh no, I, 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 was, I was good. I, was, I deserved to be saved. Liar, liar, pants on fire. So how does our United Methodist Book of Discipline describe faithful church membership? Here's a portion of what it says. Faithful membership in the local church is essential for personal growth and for developing a deeper commitment to the will and grace of God. Faithful discipleship includes the obligation to participate in the corporate life of the congregation with fellow members of the body of Christ. A member to be found faithful is bound in a sacred covenant to shoulder the burdens, share the risk, and celebrate the joy of fellow members. Can you say amen? amen. And because faithful membership has benefits, as a church we are required con to conduct a membership audit every year and report on the results of that audit during our local church charge conference, which takes place every year. Y'all need to come to those charge conferences to find out what goes on. Yeah. You want to know how much the pastor makes? Yeah. You want to know how much Reverend Wood makes? Because yeah. y'all always ask. I can't hardly go out and get a brand new car with my own money. Are we paying, Pastor? What are we paying him? I was blessed before I got here. We have to do this membership audit. We don't want to. We have to. Brother Archie comes here, sits right down there, lays, makes us lay out a book that thick of all this stuff we got to do. And we got to report on it. That audit is an attempt to look at those who are on our church rolls and discern, or somebody say discern. discern. Discern prayerfully, lovingly, whether or not they are members still. And if so, do they appear to be the type of member, faithful members, as defined by what we just read in the Book of Discipline? Are they planted in the house of the Lord? Are they growing in the house of the Lord? Are they flourishing? Are they like the cedar of Lebanon, strong and upright? because they're planted in God's house. And we're required to make that discernment and discussion with that member, if appropriate, and discern the status of their membership. 
and then either retain them on the rolls or not, always reaching some mutual agreement between the parties concerned whenever possible. Can you say amen to that process? And as a result of this annual process that we have to go through, the membership on our roles here at Dale and Lee Haven, for the most part, reflects those who have demonstrated faithful membership. They are in genuine covenant relationship with God and serving faithfully in some way. Somebody say, in some way. With a covenant mindset. So as members in the local church, the Bride of Christ, it is, it's part of our mission to serve and to help. To serve our community, to help those in need, to be a resource, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the lost, to win the lost at any cost. That's where our heart is, at least here at Dale and Lee Haven. And within the resources that God provides to us through you, through faithful stewardship, and through your labors of love, your service in various divers and sundry ways, you using your God-given gifts and graces to support the house of God, we're able sometimes, every once in a while, to make a difference, to see somebody come to the Lord, to help a family that didn't know where they were going to eat tomorrow night, to answer the calls and the knocks on that door that many of us never have to even know, don't even know about, to deal with phone calls. This, I don't even know if I should say this, but y'all need, if y'all go to talk, I think we talked about it. This church has blessed me with talking about serving. We're talking about, this press has, has blessed me with a little visa card. For the sole purpose, somebody sees me on Facebook, knows that I'm a pastor. Lord, yeah, I could tell y'all some stories. <laughs> Facebook is good, and it's not so good. <laughs> and say, you know, I get these different requests. And thank God I have this little visa card. I haven't had to use it much, but I had this little visa card that the church allows me to be responsive to needs that we don't have time to go through some committee. They need help now, not next week. I just want you to have a reflection of how serious we are about serving here and at Lee Haven. But all other things being equal. In a crisis, I'm going to say this because you need to know. Now, this is the pastor's mindset. And I do get a little, they let me talk every once in a while about how I feel about something. In a crisis, in an unexpected emergency, in those once-in-a-lifetime situations that happen to each and every one of us at one time or another, and if you hadn't won, if you hadn't had one of those moments, just keep breathing. That's right, keep breathing. It's coming your way. When in that moment we have to make decisions on how we use as a church the resources that have been placed in our care as unto the Lord. And that's how we handle them. Not like it's church money, like it's God's money. We have to make decisions on how we use those hard-earned gifts that you sow yeah. into this church. And it's a challenge sometimes, especially when there are multiple competing demands, urgent demands, all of them, crisis situations, because we're the church and we get requests from people that aren't members. And they have an expectation. They might not have been to church in 50 years. But when they're in trouble. And if you can't respond in a loving, prayerful way. 
it can have a detrimental impact on the kingdom of God. We always trust God in those search situations, but when we have these competing demands, our faithful memberships, if we had to make choices between that request and a need, dire need of a faithful member, guess where my discernment is? Faithful members will have a priority in this house. In those situations, whenever the prioritization of resources is an issue. I just needed to say that. Why? Because faithful membership has its benefits. So you who don't have a church home today, and you outside the ark of safety, you need to be covered in this season that we are in. Don't leave church without it. Being in covenant with God and with other faithful believers can save your life today. Can you say amen? amen. So at this time, I would like to ask Sister Jamel Johnson, Brother Alan Hitchner, Reverend Glenn Henry to come forward for Dale United Methodist Church, and Sister Letty, sounds like Betty, Mitchell Anderson for Lee Haven to come forward at this time. Could you give them a round of applause as they come? I'm going to ask members of the ministry team to surround them if they can. And the rest of you, we're going, you're going to be responding by this sheet here that you have before you. This won't take a long time, but we do want to do it. Before I say what I have to say, I would like our new members just turn around and face the congregation. Amen. And I'm going to ask, before we go through this little bit of liturgy, going to ask each one of them just to say something within under a minute. Under a minute, because I know some of y'all. Starting with Brother Allen. We don't need to hear the whole Bible today, Brother Allen. Just, maybe next time. I know, I'm sure. So before we go through this little bit of liturgy here, is there anybody here? I know 
some on, on online on Facebook. You can respond to this by going to the Dell or Lee Haven Facebook page, and there's an email address there. Respond to us that way, and we'll reach out to you and connect somehow. But if there's someone here that doesn't have a church home, or just feels like you just kind of renew that. If you're here today, you're welcome to participate in that at this time. Just lift up your hand if that's you and we allow you to come forward. Well, say amen, everybody. So Reverend Henry, Sister Anderson, I'm gonna have to, I can't call it because they're gonna think we related, Sister. We probably are. We, you know how it is. <laughs> Brother Hitchner and Sister Johnson, please say I will to the following if you agree. Amen. As members of Ardell and Lee Haven congregations, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Praise the Lord. Yes. Members of the household of faith, members out there, all members of either Dale or Lee Haven, I commend these persons to you, your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them and love and congregation this is the opportunity to respond and to confirm your own membership Let's give these another round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. Yay. Praise the Lord. And we will start our new member process in the coming weeks, probably when I come back from Cali, so you can learn about all the ministries. We'll give you copies of our charge conference manual from last year. Um, and through your discernment, um, just see what the Lord would have you to do. And one of the things we want to do, one of the things I know uh, Brother Hitchner has expertise in, we want to do a, another round of spiritual gifting surveys with our congregation. And that's one of the things uh, Brother Hitchner and I will be discussing. So God bless you. I'm so excited for you and us. Amen. God bless you. Let's prepare our hearts for Holy Communion at this time. Amen. Sister Lavanius song, sung the blood songs that reminded us about the blood of Christ. And we're going to ask our communion steward here at Dale to come and just stand before us as we go through our liturgy. Those of you on Facebook and online, this would be a good time to get that piece of bread, that juice, as we prepare to bless the elements. How many of you know it was the blood? that made a way for you. <laughs> Hebrews says, without the shedding of this blood, there would be no remission for our sins. Starting with the invitation.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Please repeat after me. We do not presume to come, we do not presume to, come. to this your table, merciful Lord. Trusting in our own goodness, in our own goodness. But, in your but in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy, are not worthy. That, you should us, that you should receive us, but give your word, give your word. And, we shall be and we shall be healed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. amen. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And at this time, we will bless the elements through this portion on our liturgy. It's called the Great Thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You made us in your image to love and be loved when we turned away. And our love failed. Your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Let everybody say amen. amen. Can we recite the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So you want to take your cracker, those of you online, and the wafers for us here. This represents the body of Christ that was broken for us. We just talked about it a few Sundays ago. We gave medical evidence that he suffered for us. He survived the worst beating known to man and survived the cross. It's an unprecedented thing that he did for us. This represents his body that was broken for us. And one of your, Lavania asked a very important question one Sunday after church because the Bible says his bones were broken. It was prophesied 
hundreds of years before the crucifixion, and it says his bones weren't broken. But oftentimes the liturgy sounds like his body was broken. His body was marred. It was scarred. His bones weren't broken, but his body was. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that he was beaten beyond recognition to the degree that you can recognize that it was a man hanging on the cross. These pictures we see in churches about a Jesus, which is a little blood, it's a poor represent, representation of what he looked like on that cross. This is the Lord's body that was given for you. Take and eat. We heard songs today about the power of the blood. And we know that without the shedding of the blood of Christ, we would be perpetually, eternally a captive in a sin condition. But because of the blood of Jesus, as we receive Christ, we are cleansed from our sin and our sins, both now and forever. There's power in the blood, the blood of Christ given for you. Take and drink. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory now and forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let everybody say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Can we give the Lord another hand clap of praise? Amen. amen. So this was a little bit different word today, but I took advantage of the ceremony that we did today. It's, it's very, very important that we understand uh, what God thinks about our faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Yes. Will you join me in the benediction? Y'all remember, pray for us this week. Yes. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Yes. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Amen.